Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue working with equivalent fractions. So our learning goal for today says I can generate equivalent fractions using fraction models and the number line. Today we're really going to focus a lot more on the number line as we're generating those fractions. And friends, remember, generating just means finding those fractions on the number line. Okay, so it's like a fancy way of saying we're going to find some numbers on a fraction or fractions on a number line. So the materials that you'll need are just your dry erase board for this lesson. Okay, so let's partition the number line into thirds, starting at zero and ending at one. And you're gonna label all the fractions. Okay, so here's your number line from zero to one. Go ahead and pause the video, partition the number line into thirds, label all the fractions, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so when I'm partitioning into thirds, I'm going to actually draw one less line. So I'm gonna draw two lines to partition it into thirds. You can also make sure that you have this split into thirds by counting the intervals. And remember, intervals go from zero to your first line and then from line to line. So because I have three groups, I have partitioned into thirds. Okay, so I'm gonna label my fractions. Well, zero is zero thirds. Then we have one third, two thirds, and three thirds. All right, did you guys get that too for your number line? Okay, awesome. All right, so now we're gonna partition the same number line into sixths, and we're gonna label all the fractions. Okay, so pause the video. Now partition the same number line into sixths, and then label all the fractions and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here are my six. Now remember we learned in the previous lesson that if we have um, thirds, we would just cut that in half to be able to make sixths. So I'm gonna come in here and put my other lines in. Okay, now I'm going to label 0 sixths, 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, 4 sixths, 5 sixths, and 6 sixths. Okay, does yours look like that too? All right, awesome job. So this is great to practice um, writing and uh, partitioning our number line into more than one set of parts. So for this one, we did thirds and sixths on the same number line. So draw around the box, around a box, around two sets of fractions that are equivalent. So like I could say zero sixths and zero thirds are equivalent. Okay, so that's one set of fractions. I could say six sixths and three thirds are equivalent fractions. So that would be my second set. So now you have to find two more sets of fractions that are equivalent. So pause the video, draw a box around two more sets of fractions that are equivalent, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here is my first set of fractions that are equivalent. Two sixths is equivalent to one third. We can tell that they're equivalent because they meet at the same point on the number line. That's a way to tell that we can see that they are equivalent fractions. All right, another one that I came up with was four sixths is equivalent to two thirds. Again, they meet at the same point on the number line, so that means they're equivalent fractions. Did you guys get those? Okay, awesome. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we're gonna partition the number line into halves, starting at one and ending at three, and we're gonna label all the fractions. So friends, remember when you're doing that, we start at one here, and we end at three. Before you can label or partition and label your fractions, you have to see, do I have all of the whole numbers labeled on this number line? So for example, I have one as my starting point and three as my ending point. When we look at a number line, are we gonna count from one to three? No, probably not, right? We're gonna go one, two, three. So make sure that you label your whole and then you divide each whole. So from one to two should be in halves. 
and from two to three should be in halves. And then you can label your whole number line, okay, with all the fractions. So go ahead and pause the video, partition your whole number line into halves, label the fractions, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so again, I need to label my missing hole, which is two. So now my number line has all of the holes from one, two, and three. So now from, excuse me, from one to two, I'm gonna split that in half. And then from two to three, I'm gonna split that interval in half also. So now I've split my fraction or my number line into halves. So now I need to label all of those. So instead of starting at one, I can't say that's zero halves because it's one. So we have to find the fraction that represents one when you're talking about halves. So that means we need the same number on the top and the bottom, right, to represent one. So we have two halves. Now we can add on one each time as we're going through to label our fractions. So two halves, three halves, we also have to label right here, this is part of our half, four halves, five halves, and six halves. Now, when you're getting to your whole numbers, that's where you always kind of need to pause. So let me go back to here real quick, right here. So we need to pause and say, did I label my fractions correctly so far? And the way that you could check that is you could say to yourself, look at my fraction, four Halves. So I could say four, and then when I see my fraction bar, I could say, is four divided by two, does that equal two? Because I want four to be divided by two to equal my whole number of two. If that's correct, then yeah, you're labeling your fractions correctly. If not, you need to go back and relook at what you labeled to see if you didn't, or this to make sure you didn't make a mistake. Okay? So let's go here to thirds. So I would say to myself, is six divided by two equal three? If it does, then I've labeled those fractions correctly. Let's say I got to here and I had seven halves. So I would say, does seven divided by two equal three? And then I would say, oh, that doesn't, it doesn't. So that means I mislabeled my fractions and I gotta go back and take another look. So anytime you have those whole numbers in there, that's where you definitely want to pause and double check to make sure that you're labeling your fractions correctly. All right, so now we're going to partition the same number line into fourths and label all the fractions. So go ahead and pause the video, label this same number line into fourths, and label all the fractions. Now remember, you might have some of the points might be exactly the same as where your halves are, so make sure you label those as well. So pause finish your uh, partition your number line and label the fractions and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so I need to go from one to two and split that into fourths. So there's my fourths. I'm gonna go from two to three now and label and split into fourths. Okay. And now I can go back and label. So I'm going to come up to one is four fourths. Remember, because we're starting at one, not zero. Then five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, eight fourths, nine fourths, ten fourths, eleven fourths, and twelve fourths. Now remember, at those whole numbers, you can pause and check. So then if I'm at three, I would say twelve divided by four, does that equal three? And it does, so that means I'm labeling my fractions correctly. All right, so good job with that one, friends. All right, so now you're going to draw a box around three sets of uh, fractions that are equivalent. Okay, so where are those ones meeting at the same point on the number line? Draw a box around those, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here I came up with six-fourths is equivalent to three halves because they meet at the same point on the number line. I also see that eight fourths is equivalent to four halves and 10 fourths is equivalent to five halves. You can also label um, your whole numbers. A four fourths is equivalent to two halves 
and 12 fourths is equivalent to 6 halves. Those are also equivalent fractions on here as well. All right, so great job with that, friends. Oh, there's some delicious cake down there. That means I'm having a problem about cake. All right, so Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Briscoe each made a cake for their family. Mm, yum. Mrs. Walker cut her cake into four equal parts and her family shared two pieces. Mrs. Briscoe cut her cake into five equal parts and her family shared two pieces. Did they eat the same amount of cake? Draw a number line to explain your answer. So you're gonna to wanna to model the cake that I ate or that I baked, which was four equal parts, and that Miss Briscoe made, which is five equal parts, and then find those points on the number line where they each ate two pieces. So where would that be? And then see if they're at the same place. Okay, so pause the video, draw your number line out, answer, did they eat the same amount of cake? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you pause if you need more time. All right, so here's my number line. We're starting at zero and one. Mrs. Walker cut her cake into four equal parts. So I'm gonna do that here. And then I'm gonna label this zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. And then her family shared two pieces, so that's two fourths. So I'm gonna label that with a dot right there. Then Miss Briscoe cut her cake into five equal parts and her family shared two pieces. So now I'm gonna split it into fifths. Label those fractions. And then Miss Briscoe shared two pieces, so there's two fifths. So then I'm gonna to go to my question and say, did they eat the same amount of cake? Are they at the same place on the number line, friends? No, so that means they didn't eat the same amount of cake. So no, Mrs. Walker's family ate more cake because two-fourths and two-fifths are not equal. Two-fourths is a greater distance from zero, and that means that two-fourths is greater than two-fifths. So if you look, friends, if I start at, two, or at zero over here, two-fourths is farther away. It's a greater distance, so that means it's a larger fraction. All right, so hopefully you guys got that one too. If not, rewind the video and listen to how I explain that again, okay? All right, so friends, for your problem set today, you wanna make sure that you have your fraction strips uh, because that's definitely gonna be able to help you as you go through uh, to be able to compare fractions with those because you're going to be choosing fractions that you're going to label on your number line um, and it'll be very helpful to be able to see which fractions are equivalent using your fraction strips before you begin uh, drawing those fractions on your number lines okay so oh yeah you guys did a great job generating generating equivalent fractions using fraction models and the number line so please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.